Welcome back. Testimony continues today in the stepmother murder trial in Colorado. Letitia Stauk is accused of murdering her 11-year-old stepson, Gannon. Stauk has pled not guilty by reason of insanity. The jury heard testimony yesterday that Gannon had 18 sharp force injuries on his body, a fractured skull, and a gunshot wound to his neck. His body was found weeks later in, the suitcase, in a suitcase on the side of the road, hundreds of miles away from his home in Florida all the way from Colorado. Today, the jury heard from the defendant's brother, Court TV legal correspondent, Julie Janae is here covering the trial, and uh, she joins us in the studio and uh, talk about today, uh, I guess it was fairly dramatic, when you've got a sibling, one at the defense table and one on the witness stand, it has to be dramatic. Absolutely dramatic, and for Dante Lowry, it seemed excruciating for him to be there on the stand. He's testifying against his sister, but he was very clear with these attorneys, with the jury, that he did not want to be there. He wanted to just get through this. And as soon as he sat down, it just started answering those initial questions about who he is, his relation to this case. He let out a moment that prompted the jury to have to be set out of the room. Take a listen. What is your relationship with Letitia Stout? That's my sister. Pretty tough for you being here right now? Yes, sir. Hang in there, all right? Um... <laughs> Why, Tisha? <laughs> Mr. Lowry, do you need a do you need a moment? Take a break for a moment. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have your step by in the back of the jury room for a few minutes. All right for the jury. So when that moment happened, Letitia Stout stood for the jury but had zero reaction to her brother uh, making this outburst. He did come back and get it together. And really the bulk of what he's telling this jury as far as the facts of this case is he saw her moving her things away from the house, away from one car into a budget van that she had rented. Mm -hmm. And he remembers a suitcase. Take a listen. Did you ask her what's in the suitcase? Yep. What'd she say? She told me it was off post. <laughs> Why'd you ask her what's in the suitcase? I didn't feel right about it. What about that suitcase didn't make you feel right? I just felt like it was just, I just felt like it was too heavy for her. And what you're meaning is the Letitia that you know, the only way she could have done something so horrible is she has some type of mental break. When it first, when I, when everything first happened, and we found out that the little boy was found in the body, and we found out where he was found, I, it, it just, at that point, I knew she did it because of, when I seen that suitcase and asked her about it, she just had funny to me. And yeah, I thought she might have snapped and went crazy. Okay. But now, no. Oh. Said that was a little bit of her direct and her cross examination there, or his rather direct and cross. But can you imagine him knowing that that suitcase had the body of little Gannon uh, in it? And something told him to ask about what's in the suitcase. Well, oh, that's got to be horrible that he's living. And at the very end there, I uh, noticed that he said, yeah, he, she might have sna snapped. I thought that then, but not now. He did, got that in there, so he, the he jury knows. <laughs> Right, and that's definitely the prosecution's position on this, that yeah. this is not something where she had a mental break or that she was legally insane, but he answered that he thought she knew right from wrong based on everything he knows about his sister. Mm. Oh, gosh, another victim, the, the brother. Um, yesterday, uh, the jury heard a bit of uh, Letitia talking to the world about uh, how she was asking for help to find Gannon. Yeah, she went on TV. She went on the news at uh, about three or four days after Gannon went missing. But this was really in reaction to a lot of the rumors that were circling online about her. She said she was getting death threats. And then she was asked about a message, whether or not she wanted to give a message to Gannon. And if you'll notice a change in the camera position, because she said it one way the first time, and then she asked to record it again, which we do when it's a recorded interview. We allow people, if they need to say it or fix something, to say it. But listen to the difference in her emotion in these two separate messages. 
Any message for Gannon? The message for Gannon I have is, Gannon, when you get here, you'll be able to truly tell what happened. And then I really hope I get a sincere apology from everyone who has made all those things, especially from my husband. We just wanted to add a message to Gannon from my family, is that we love you and miss you. And we hope that you come home soon. And again, I can't wait till you can come home and let everyone know that you're okay. We love you. Can't miss that change, Dad. In her <laughs> demeanor and the way that she delivered that second message, knowing that Gannon was already deceased, wasn't coming home, but she, was, she spent a lot of time in that raw interview that we were able to see in court talking about how she was treated by police. She felt her constitutional rights were violated. Yeah, she had that same, the octaves just go up a little bit um, intentionally. Uh, I.e. Alec Murdoch ever heard, uh, you know, well, that. Body language expert. <laughs> the, uh, yes, uh, but that's fascinating. What did the jury think of that? Well, usually we don't know, right? right? And I'm not even in that courtroom, so I wouldn't be able to see what they are thinking. But we in this jurisdiction get to hear their questions. And that moment, actually prompted quite a few questions from them. Here's a look at some of those. Uh, they asked after that reporter, Spencer Wilson, was on the stand giving the video to them. They wanted to know, did she stop crying immediately after the interview? And the reporter said, yes, she did. They also asked if her demeanor changed after the interview. And he said actually it was surprising to him that she did quickly change her demeanor immediately after the camera was off. So these jurors, they're astute. Yeah, and it is amazing what the video captures, like, uh, again, with the with Murdoch. Remember when he's there going, uh, uh, and then uh, another person walks by in the body camera, and he's like, oh, hey, hey, hey how you doing, man? Uh, and then he's back. Um, it's telling. Yeah, it sure is. Well, um, thank you, uh, Julia. I appreciate the update. It is a fascinating case. Aaron Reed is still with us in Phoenix, Arizona. And, and uh, Aaron, the it is tough to pull off a fake emotion, whether you're in a courtroom or on a camera. And Letitia Stout is kind of hit with both of them here. <laughs> it, it is difficult. And you, you can easily see the difference in the demeanor of the two interviews and that is fascinating to me and fascinating to watch knowing that uh, he had already passed away at the time of the interview i think it's just a, a chance for her to try to garner support and garner remorse for her and it, i don't know if it's working or not i'm not in the courtroom i'm not one of the jurors but i think most people would be able to see through that kind of a, a, a change in such a short period of time yeah, and apparently the jury um, did as well uh, with those questions. It's fascinating when jurors are able to ask questions because you do get a feel for where at least some of their headspace is during, during the testimony. And for, I don't know if you've practiced in a state that allows it. I know you're in Arizona, but um, did, I guess the question is, have, have you experienced it? And if so, um, do the attorneys learn from it? I assume they do. Uh, in Arizona, we do allow juror questions, and it is an integral part of the trial. It is a direct insight as into one of the jurors' minds and exactly what they're thinking, and it, you can get a lot of information from juror questions. You typically will go and approach the judge and see if the question's proper under the rules of evidence and the form of the question, and if that meets all those criteria, then you get to answer the, the witness gets to answer the question and everybody in the courtroom gets an insight as to what that particular juror's thinking at that moment. It's, it's a very critical piece of, of information. Yeah, absolutely.